G'day again. You know, just recently in the uh, youth ministry that I'm a part of, we usually pray at the end of the night. And as we were praying, one of the leaders made reference to, um, you know, planting a seed and making it mix in with the good soil. And, I, and that's a reference to the, the parable of the sower. And um, what happened, you know, years ago, I heard a, an, or some, uh, an analogy that happens when, uh, the, when farmers back then used to um, cultivate their field. What they would do is they would scatter the, field, scatter the seed, like it says, on the path, on the good soil, on the rocky ground. And the reason being is they would plow the whole field, everything, path, good soil, rocky ground. So there is potential for good soil to mix in with rocky ground. And you know, if you grow veggies, you'll know what I mean when I say this. Little rocks, particularly, they, they help retain the water. And the water um, helps the growing, uh, you know, the, the, the keeping the, the, the soil soft, keeping it moist, and then sprouting the seed so it grows. And then there's a harvest of some kind when uh, the crops fully grown. And um, the, 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 the concept of water is another thing that is uh, used in the, in the Bible to describe the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Um, in the promise of, in the Old Testament, it says that there'll be uh, they talk about the former rain, the sporadic rain, and the latter rain. So in Israel, and particularly at the time of the Bible, there was virtually no autumn or winter. There was a dry summer and a wet winter. And what would happen at the end of summer, the, the, the soil would be bone dry, and there would be an initial... Um, a deluge to soften the soil up across the country. Uh, <clears throat> and then there would be sporadic uh, patches of rain throughout the, the, the course of the winter. And then there would be what they call the latter rain. And that would, by that time, the seed had been cast out and, and ploughed in, and it would sprout the seed. And then eventually, it, 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 as that went on, it would grow. And then there would be a time, a few weeks actually, where there's a harvest to gather in. And everybody would be gathered in to gather the harvest. Now, <clears throat> the analogy with the Holy Spirit is that at Pentecost, that was like the former rain. It was the initial deluge of, because uh, the promise there is that it would be poured out on all men, or all mankind, or humanity, depending on what term you want to use. But, um, and then in the, in, since then, there's been continued outpourings of the Holy Spirit. And then some people even say that in the last hundred years we have the, the Pentecostal movement where not just Pentecostals, but you know Anglicans, Baptists, even Salvation Army people have helped this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And um, the, the point is, this is how God works. You know, we, we start something that we feel God's called us to do and we pray that God will will help us, and then we continue with it. And then, when it's when we can feel that there's some momentum, we ask God to really intervene, and that's when the harvest comes. And you know, Jesus said that the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. And ask the Lord of the harvest for workers. You know, today sometimes. We're scratching our, if you're in a church like mine, we're still scratching around for people to, to lead things and to help out. The Lord of the harvest is the one to ask. And I, I can see in, in what I'm doing that one day, some of these young people that I'm, that I'm investing in, I see them as mature Christians ministering to other people. And we all do as all the all the team that we we're a part that I'm a part of, we see that. <clears throat> you know where you are today. Where's God? I want to say to you: if you know God as your own 
you know, if you're a Christian, I want to say this to you. What, what, what are you called to do? And where's the path that that calling is meant to take? And who are the people that you are going to impact and change their, not just their lives, but the people after them? Because I guarantee you their ancestors will come to faith as well. So what I'm saying to you is your obedience will affect other people. And I, w I want you to really think about that today. I remember myself mowing a lawn in, in, the, in a suburb in Newcastle and spending all day wrestling with God with this issue. And I've got to say, <clears throat> that was in 1998 and ever since that has it, it, it set me on a path and it's really kept me on that trajectory of seeking God's will and uh, being used by God and wherever I can. And in that conversation, I had a conversation with God. And, you know, if you've never gone down this path, well, you need that initial step of planting the seed, casting the seed. And I, I, what I want to say to you today is it's time to ask God for that direction. And as we close today, I'm going to pray that you pray. One, for those people who've never done that, who've never taken their relationship to the next step, where they find out what they're meant to be, I'm going to pray about that. If you're in a ministry where you think, we're never getting anywhere, but I know we're meant to be here and we've got to overcome, um, I want to pray for that. And I want to pray that we all get to the point where we can reap the harvest. So let's close our time in prayer today with a prayer for those three things. Let us pray. Dear God, I thank you that you have that you have actually, you've connected with us, that you've reached out to us and your son's died for us, for our sins. But I thank you also that you, that you, uh, that you want to have us part of the, of the solution, that we, you want to use us in connecting to people. For those of us, Lord, who want to, they've, they've become a Christian and they want to take your relationship further, I pray, Lord, that you would speak to them today about what they're meant to, what place, their place in your kingdom, where it's meant to be. Pray that you would speak clearly to them, just like you did me in that day in 1998. Lord, for those who have been toiling for some time and can't see the end, I just pray that you would give them strength to endure, and you'll give them the the the, the strength to continue to be consistent and the conviction to overcome by asking you to help them overcome. Lord, we want to see people, I know I want to see people come to faith and Lord, as some of the seeds that we have planted, wherever we are, Lord, I pray that they would germinate and the ones that have germinated I pray, Lord, that they'll come full bloom and that we can reap a harvest that you have used us in. So guide our path wherever we are today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for your time today and continue to walk in God. See ya.